Hello, I'm Mike Mustaine. I'm sitting here with Brad Cummings. You know, all of our Clarksville departments are important. Uh, we commonly think of the police. We commonly think of the fire. But our public works department is one of the most valuable departments that, that we have in Clarksville. Uh, and it's one of the, the most varied departments in the things that they do. Uh, and the services that they uh, do for us. And so I felt it very important to bring uh, Director Cummings on. Uh, Brad is the director of the Public Works Department. And uh, in just a minute, I'm, I'm going to have him introduce himself and, and tell us a little bit about him. Brad, if you will, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us about your family and and I understand you're a Clarksville boy, and that is that's good news. Brad? Well, thank you, Mike, for the opportunity to come today. Uh, my name is Brad Cummings. I'm the Public Works Director for the Town of Clarksville. Um, the Assistant Director is Mike Huff, as many people have had the privilege to meet. I am a Clarksville boy. I was born and raised in Clarksville. Uh, my parents raised me on Sherwood Court in the south end of Clarksville in a house that my grandpa built in 1956. My, grand, my mom and dad bought it in 78, and then my wife, Teresa, and I bought it from my parents in 2001. So we've raised our kids there. We have uh, three amazing kids uh, that we're both very proud of. We have Ethan, who is 21 and is an electrician. He is also a uh, Clarksville community uh, or went to the Clarksville Community School Systems. Him and his girlfriend, uh, Micaiah, live here in Clarksville. Micaiah, we love her as if she's our own child. She's, uh, the two of them have recently made Teresa and I grandparents to baby Easton, and uh, he is absolutely perfect. Uh, our daughter, Kirsten, she's 18 years old, graduated in 2000 and, or 2020 from Clarksville High School and is currently attending college, and she lives in a studio apartment above Ethan. Uh, then we have Jacob, who is the youngest. He is a senior at Clarksville High School. We'll be graduating here in a few weeks, and we'll be off to attend college here in the future. That's great, and it's good that you are a Clarksville uh, Stand out, and we appreciate all that you do. Uh, ever since the very first time I met you, Brad, I was very impressed, and I continue to be even to this day. Uh, one of the things that I get a lot is I get a lot of questions uh, about the Public Works Department uh, uh, and what can and can't be do, and so I jotted those down and wanted to kind of go through those and give you the opportunity for future reference. So this, this video will be for anybody to have that they can come back to and, and reference in the future about if they have a particular question. Uh, some of these will be picked up even then. Um, I like to call it the, the claw truck. Uh, I get a lot of questions about that. If you will, tell us uh, when we can get the claw truck, how do we schedule getting the claw truck, and what can and, and can't be picked up on the claw truck. And I hear there's another name for it. Yeah, the claw truck, which many people refer to as well as the grapple truck, is basically for bulk pickup items. Um, it's different from other sanitation collection methods and that it doesn't follow necessarily a daily route rather than it follows the route based on the material that it's picking up. So we pick up two sorts of materials. We pick up sanitation, which is trash, couches, appliances, things of that nature. And then we also pick up woody material and that's non-processed wood. So not like your decking material, but also, but it would include like trees, stumps, things of that nature. Um, the best way for you to schedule the claw truck is to contact us and tell us exactly what it is that you have that you're planning on putting out there, whether it be in the trash category or in the woody material. And then we will put you on the list. And typically we can get to you the same day or the day after. Uh, there is times that we have to go longer than that, but typically we're, 
we're within a one day period turnaround on being able to provide you all the service. The items that we are not allowed to take would be those items such as e-waste, which is controlled by state government. Um, and it used to be that e-waste really just resolved, revolved around TVs and monitors. However, it's beginning to funnel into appliances and such as a lot of them have the new touch, uh, touch screens on those and, and have an e-waste factor as well. Uh, gas, chemicals, oils, um, and just items like batteries, those items are items that are not permitted to go through the claw truck. So like televisions? Yes, televisions fall within e-waste, so we cannot put out televisions. Uh, those items, your televisions, your chemicals such as uh, household chemicals, the different types of paints that you have, those can go to Clark County Recycling and they have a method there where they recycle those items. Thank you. I've, I have personally had a lot of great uh, uh, experience with, with the claw truck and I appreciate you having that service. Uh, kind of along the same line, there is yard waste, there's the, the chipper truck, and if you will, kind of go through the uh, leaf pickup schedule, if you will. Absolutely. A lot of residents gets confused over yard waste and the chipper truck. In reality, they're both similar items. However, a yard waste is those smaller items, such as your grass clippings, uh, anytime you prune some bushes, things of that nature. Small amounts of mulch, small amounts of dirt, and small amounts of stone can be used in your yard waste containers. And there's two methods to participate in yard waste. One method is curbside pickup, which we run from the first week of April through the last Wednesday of December. And during that time, we run three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and residents are more than welcome to call us and we'll explain to them by their location where at which day of the week that their service is provided. Um, those participating in the yard waste program on the curbside pickup have to provide a specific style can. That can is a tote style can. We do not manually dump those cans. Those cans are lifted by a machine and dumped into the rear of the truck. So once they provide that can, we typically will tag that can with a yard waste sticker, and then we'll service that can throughout the remainder of the year as they put it out. The drop-off location is currently located at 107 Roy Cold Drive, which is in the south end of Clarksville off Harrison Avenue. Um, we run that year around. From January the 1st through the end of March, we run it Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then we run extended hours during the uh, yard waste season, which is Monday and Wednesday from 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then we run Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon. And the yard waste season, as mentioned above or before, was first uh, of April through the last Wednesday there in December. Thanks, Brad. And uh, kind of along that same line, uh, talking about yard waste and chipper truck and all that, um, I've been told that there is a, a length requirement or a maximum length or typically a maximum length on tree limbs, and if you can tell us about the root balls and, and why we need to worry about those. The chipper truck, it's best for us to put items out that goes into the chipper truck to be around the four foot length. Uh, we are able to run items that are longer than those if the diameter stays down around six inches or less. If we get items that are four foot and, and greater than six inches, then we run into some issues with just being able to handle the material and feed it through the chipper. A lot of times if residents have piles like that, they will qualify for a pickup with a grapple truck. And the great thing about the grapple truck is if you're gonna have a large pile, you don't have to stock it as nice as you would for the chipper truck for those guys to be able to handle it as the grapple truck or the claw truck has the ability to reach over and grab the pile as a whole. 
And for leaf season, great... season, leaf season this year will run November the 8th for two weeks. And we will take off on the week of the holiday, which is the Thanksgiving weekend. We only work three days that week. So we don't run a full route that week. And then we'll pick up that following Monday and run an additional two weeks. And that is a six day route for each of those four weeks. I appreciate that. Um, talking about the trash, um, there are some things that we cannot and we should not uh, put in the trash. Um, can you tell us about some of the things that, uh, just in our everyday trash, I guess, uh, things that we do not need to be putting out for the trash and exposing our public works employees to? Absolutely. The big thing is e-waste. That's the most common item that we see that is placed out that we have to leave curbside. And that's gonna be your TV, your TV monitors, some of your computers, depending on whether they uh, uh, include a screen or they do not include a screen, and some other items like some of the newer appliances that we're seeing, uh, they also have the monitors on those that will or that designate them as being e-waste. Uh, other items that are routinely placed out there is paint. Um, paint is a little bit different. We have water-based and oil-based paints. If it's a water-based paint, uh, residents, what they can do is fill those paint cans with either oil dry or cat litter, let them set open for up to 10 days. Once they harden up, we're able to take those to the landfill. Oil-based paints or uh, different types of oils, those need to be recycled through Clark County Recycling. Uh, any types of gases or old fuel that may have gone stale in a can needs to be recycled through Clark County Recycling, not put out at the curb, curb line and batteries, batteries need to be recycled as well. The, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, a little bit about damaged cans uh, and the replacement. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I know one time the handle came off of my can and I didn't know what I was gonna do and I called you and, and uh, uh, we actually got it fixed. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. We. What we do is the cans are the responsibility of the property owner, the homeowner, or the resident, and the town provides the service. We do have a gentleman that does go around. If a can is damaged or has been broken, uh, they will do their best to repair those cans. And in many cases, they're able to and extend the life for one, two, three years before the can needs to be fully replaced. Um, we also collect thrown away cans, if we're able to reuse the wheels or lids and, and give those back to residents, we will do that as well to extend the life of their cans. But there is many times that a can itself breaks to a point where we're no longer safely able to utilize that can and it does need to be replaced. And during those, those few moments or those few times, uh, residents are required to replace those themselves. You know, one of the hardest things that I have found to do is throw away a trash can. What if I have a trash can that really, um, it's a trash can and I don't want it anymore. I set it out for the trash and uh, the workers come by and they dump the trash out of it and then set it back down. How can I connote or designate to, th to them that this is really trash and I want to throw it away? In those situations, it's best to call in and let us know you wanna throw a can away and we will come out and actually get that can, a supervisor will. Uh, we are very adamant about not throwing away cans to the crews and even times there's notes put on them, please take this can, they get left just because that's the process that they're been trained in. Uh, so. It's, it's best if you do have a can that you're wanting to throw away, if it's not broken up into pieces, which most of them aren't, uh, just contact us. We'll swing by after it's been dumped and we'll take the can and bring it back into the shop. I appreciate that. And uh, so uh, I would assume from the things that you're saying, if we have a lot of stuff, a particular lot of stuff, 
or odd lot stuff, stuff that is particularly odd, uh, we really need to call the office and confirm with you all or let you all know. The, the main thing is I'm hearing that communication is the key to us helping you help us. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I think that is, that's very correct. Um, the best thing that you can do, and we get a lot of situations where either people are moving in or they buy a house and people left a lot of material or, or someone has passed away and they're doing a house clean out. And uh, best thing for you to do in those rare situations, just call us. Uh, we will do our best to work with you in all of those to be able to pick up anything that it is that you all have available for us to pick up. And those few items that we can't, we'll explain to you and, and help you in any way we can on getting rid of those as well. Um, also, if, if you uh, call in when you have those large pickups, it allows for us to put you on a schedule and it kind of bumps you up in the order of being reported by someone that comes out on the street, a supervisor or one of the sanitation workers that ride by and they report it throughout the day. So it's best, the best thing is for communication. Great. I appreciate that. Um, two more questions and then uh, I'm going to open it up to you if you have anything specific that you want to, to talk about. Another two questions that I get asked a lot and, and uh, uh, many times I, I, I take a lot of phone calls from these and, and I understand that. Uh, the first being snow routes. Uh, can you give us some general information on the snow routes and how uh, the Clarksville Public Works tries to, to work within the snow routes or snow plows and my street being plowed or not being plowed? Absolutely. Um, I believe that the town of Clarksville has for a long time and continues to set the bar for the standard in the area for snow removal. Um, I, I think our crews do a fantastic job. I'm pleased with them every time I come out and see the way that the streets look. I know that they work tirelessly through the evenings. Many of them come right back in in the morning time and, and work on the sanitation trucks or chipper trucks, things of that nature as the following day. Um, but our goal internally is, is that we would like to see where residents don't have to travel no more than three blocks before they hit a treated street. And in the town of Clarksville, currently we have eight streets where residents have to travel up to three blocks. All other residents throughout the entire town travel two or one block before they get to a treated street, if they don't live on a treated street. The town of Clarksville has roughly 211 lane miles of road. We currently provide service to 146 of those lane miles. Um, we provide service to all of our arterial roads, roughly 96% of our major collectors. And then we're right there around 47% of all local roads receive service throughout the town of Clarksville. In those rare instances that we have big snows in our area where temperature allows for the snow to linger for a few days, we typically give the guys about a 24 hour period to rest up and then we come back out and then we start doing the local roads as well. That's not regularly given that our condition in this area, the ground temperatures and the weather doesn't permit for snows to linger too long. However, when it does, we do respond to those as well. You know, one of the amazing things about this, the snow routes and the snow removal and, and cleaning our streets like that is for the most part, I think the same people who uh, faithfully pick up our, our trash uh, and run those trucks, uh, then they go back and they pick up a snow plow and they're out snow plowing. So we don't forfeit uh, trash pickup for snow routes. For the most part, they're they're actually doing double duty and and uh, uh, they deserve our praise more than our criticism. Would you agree? I agree. They do a great job. Last question, then I'm going to let you um, say whatever you'd like, and hopefully this has addressed a lot of um, a lot of questions that a lot of people ask. Um, a big question is when will my street get paved, and um, and and can you tell us a little bit about that process? Well, given today 
it's difficult to determine when your street's going to be paved. What we do is, is we meet quarterly with the utility coordination committee and which basically comprises of all the different utilities within our area. And so we all discuss projects. Um, during those meetings, as projects come up, obviously it moves some of the paving projects around or our paving projects may speed up some of their projects. And so we do try to work on that and we do try to develop a five-year plan. However, with the construction and with fiber and different things that are going through all the local communities right now, it does require a lot of coordination between the parties so that we're not paving a road and then having it tore up 18 months, 36 months later, and making us look like we didn't coordinate properly. Uh, we do utilize a PACER rating system. Um, PACER stands for Pavement Surface Evaluation Rating. And basically what that is, is a visual rating system that we basically go out once every two years, which is required by NDOT. We rate each step of the roadway. So we, we rate all roadways. We give them a rating number between one and 10. And those numbers determine what type of service that road needs in order to make improvements to that road. Basically your eights and nines and tens don't really receive any service outside of something along the lines of crack sealing. Once you get into the five, six and sevens, then you get into some spot treatments uh, as it may relate to uh, uh, patching and things of that nature. And then four and below, you're into either mill and pave or total reconstruction. And I think it's important for folks to realize and understand that your 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 paving budget uh, really isn't a lot compared to the road miles that we have and and the need that we have and and so to some extent you're limited on, by budgeting uh, but you I believe are doing the very best that you can through the through the pacer system and and working that diligently. And I appreciate the work that you all have done. Um, I do see a lot of, of, of black patches out there where uh, maybe uh, a street's not getting paved, but there's a hole there and we need to patch it. And, and so the guys come by and, and do that for us. And that is much appreciated. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know that I've, uh, I don't have any other questions. Uh, is there anything that you can tell us that that might be a good suggestion for us to help the public works department uh, help us? Uh, what what can we do to help you help us? I think the big thing there is communication. I think that the town of Clarksville in the whole is big, and for us to go out and do inspections routinely is very difficult with manpower. We're always out and we're always looking for things, but we're going to miss a lot of stuff. The, the more communication we have from residents that sees these items, it gives us a first hand basis of where these problems are. We're able to respond right away. Typically we respond day of any type of concerns or complaints that we may get and uh, at least gather a plan at that particular time. We may not be able to do the work that day, but we'll put a plan together and be able to make some improvements. But the big thing for us would be communication. I believe that's true in so many of, of the varied departments throughout the town. Um, I just thought of something while we were talking and uh, maybe you can cover this. Uh, the, it's, there's a lot of frustration um, at the intersection of uh, and you know where I'm going with this, I'm sure, Brad. Uh, at the intersection of Veterans Parkway and I-65, uh, that light is out. And so many times people says, why doesn't the town of Clarksville fix that light? And I'm going to give you the opportunity to answer that question here. The light there on at Veterans and 65 and also at the other connector points, Lewis and Clark and Eastern and 65, those are all owned and maintained by the state of Indiana. Uh, the town does not have keys to be able to get into their systems and reset systems. 
uh, when they do flash red and or they have power outages. Um, but it does seem like it goes in spurts. There were some improvements made by NDOT. I think it was in late 2019. And we saw a period of time where there was some improvements. And then here recently in 2020 and into 2021, we are, are back to experiencing a lot of outage, power outages in that area. Each one of those we report it to NDOT. We use the uh, reporting system so that they have a log. We don't just call people randomly. We go through the system so that it's logged on to their system and that they are able to track how many complaints they have or requests for services. Um, it seems like the last few weeks it's been better. Uh, I know that NDOT, I've seen them out there making some changes to their system. So hopefully if they had some conflicts there that they've got those parts replaced and that it does better. But in general, there is a serious problem there that uh, is being addressed to the state level from both the town manager, myself, and also including Chief Palmer. Brett, I want to thank you for coming on and answering these questions and taking the time out of your busy day. You're, you are very busy. I know you are. I've seen you in action. And again, I'm very proud uh, of our public works department. And I'm very proud that, that you lead the way. And uh, Mike is right there as your right hand man. And, and that is so much appreciated. Again, uh, this is Brad Cummings. Brad is the director of public works for the town of Clarksville. Uh, on the screen that you're watching, you can see their hours of operation, 6.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. The phone number, 283-8233. Did I get that right? Uh, so if, if, if you will, if you need to, to reach out and, and fill in any of these blanks, um, let them know about a special pickup you need or whatever, please do, please feel free, uh, to reach out to Brad. Uh, if you didn't know him before, now you know who Brad Cummings is and, uh, you, Brad, you are so much appreciated and, uh, we wanted you to know that. So I'm going to end this, uh, I'm going to end this live video and again thanks to everyone for for being here and uh, tuning in on this we will put this on our youtube channel we'll put it out there uh, for anyone to have for future reference so uh, thanks everybody take care see you later <laughs>